Yikes, there is just no doubt about it. Total War Warhammer 3 is a very demanding game. Not even the RTX 3060 or GTX 1080 Ti can deliver a locked 60 FPS experience at 1080p using the Ultra preset. But is it as bad as some people are making out? That's exactly what we're going to find out today, testing over 30 GPUs, looking at both the Ultra and Medium presets. Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru, and yes that is right, today we are back with another extensive GPU benchmark video. This time we are checking out Total War Warhammer 3, the latest in the long running and highly popular turn based strategy franchise. Before we get into the nitty gritty though, I do just want to address some of the performance issues that have been floating around on the web, with reports of just awful performance regardless of the settings used. Now, there is no doubt about it, this is a very heavy game, but I can't say I've experienced the severe performance drops or just incredibly low frame rates that some people are reporting. That's not to say that frame rates are high, however, but based on my testing with previous games in the Total War franchise, I can't say I was too surprised by the results, apart from one pretty significant issue with NVIDIA GPUs that we will get to. Starting with a look at the settings menu though, the main video menu lets you set your resolution, adjust brightness, but most importantly here you can pick one of four presets. You've got low, medium, high and ultra. Thankfully there are a large number of adjustable graphic settings in the advanced menu though, which we have come to expect from Total War games, so hopefully that does bode well for overall scalability, which we test later in this video. For the bulk of my testing though, I'm going to be focusing on the Ultra preset, and we do also test with the Medium preset as well. Just one other thing to add though, for all of my testing, I do have the Enable Unlimited Video Memory option enabled, and this just means certain settings won't be adjusted if the game deems a GPU to not have sufficient VRAM for the settings selected, so it basically just ensures we have results that are all directly comparable. For my testing today as well, I did opt to use the built-in battle benchmark, just because it gives highly repeatable results. Based on my playthrough of the game's prologue and a few of the quest battles as well, I would say it is generally representative of the performance you can expect in a battle. Of course, some scenes with loads of units on screen or in a different environment can see lower performance, but I'd say this is a good representation of the overall experience and it is a very consistent benchmark as well. As for our test system, we are using our new GPU benchmark system powered by MSI and I actually recently made a video going into all of the components in detail so if you do want to check that out we'll leave a link in the description below. For the core spec though, we have an Intel i9-12900K CPU and that is plugged into the MSI Z690 Unify motherboard while we also have 32GB of a data XPG Lancer DDR5 memory clocked at 6000MHz. All testing was done with the 4K MSI MPG321 URQD monitor as well. Lastly, we are of course using the latest game-ready drivers at the time of testing. So for NVIDIA, that was the 5.11.79 driver, while for AMD, we used the Adrenaline 22.2.2 driver. We'll kick off our testing at 1080p then using the Ultra preset, but do note as we tested over 30 GPUs, I ended up splitting the charts in two. So here we're looking at the lower performing half. It is a pretty rough start here, it has to be said. With eight of the GPUs on this chart, unable to maintain a frame rate of at least 30 FPS. And that includes the GTX 1060, RX 580 and even the GTX 1650 Super. Now, some of those GPUs did actually average over 30 FPS, 
but it was the 1% lows which dipped below that figure. The first GPU actually capable of maintaining 30 FPS at all times is the GTX 1660 Super, so that's not exactly a slow card. Above that, the GTX 1070, Vega 56 and RTX 3050 are all delivering about 45 FPS on average, while it's a slight step up to the RX 6600, RX 5600 XT and Vega 64, which hit the 50 FPS mark. At the very top of this chart as well, we have the RTX 2060, but that can't even hit 60 FPS at 1080p ultra settings. So definitely use that performance as a warning. This game is very heavy indeed. As we move on to the top half of the chart at 1080p, I want to address something else I noticed in the data. You probably already saw it on the previous chart too, but there is a clear issue with Nvidia and its frame times in this game, as evidenced by the 1% lows. Take the RX 6600 XT for instance. This GPU isn't much faster than the GTX 1080 Ti on average, but its 1% lows are significantly better, and we can see this in numerous other examples. The best way to visualize this is actually with a frame time plot. And here we're comparing the RX 6700 XT and the RTX 3060 Ti. We can clearly see that the AMD GPU is overall very consistent with its frame times, but the 3060 Ti exhibits several big spikes, definitely giving it a bit of a hitchy feeling. In actual fact, this next plot is even worse for Nvidia. We're still looking at the same two GPUs, but we're now up at 1440p, and frame times are just wildly inconsistent for the Nvidia GPU. This is definitely something that needs to be addressed, and it could well explain some of the user reports we've seen about terrible performance that have been going around. Back to the chart though, for 1080p Ultra settings, both the RX 6600 XT and RX 5700 XT will do a solid job. But with the reduced 1% low performance of those Nvidia GPUs clearly evident, it's actually not until we get up to the RX 6700 XT where we have the first GPU able to maintain over 60 FPS at all times. Above that, the RTX 3070, RTX 2080 Ti and RX 6800 all deliver pretty much identical performance, though the 6800 XT and 6900 XT do lag behind both the RTX 3080 and RTX 3090 at the top of the chart. As we step up to 1440p then, here we are back with the lower half of the chart, though to be honest I'm not really sure you will want to use any of these cards at ultra settings at 1440p. As we can see even the RTX 2060 is barely scraping by with 35 FPS on average. Stay tuned for the medium preset testing though which thankfully is much less demanding. As for the rest of the cards we tested at 1440p ultra preset, the numbers here do just show how heavy this game can be. The likes of the RTX 3060 and RTX 2070 Super are both hitting frame rates in the 40s, and even the 6700 XT just scrapes in with 51 FPS on average. The RTX 3060 Ti is closer to 60 FPS, but with poorer 1% lows, as we showcased earlier with the frame time plot. The RX 6800 XT is actually the first GPU we tested that was able to keep above 60 FPS at all times, but the RX 6900 XT is still a bit slower than the RTX 3080, and the RTX 3090 is the top dog, able to just about hit 100 FPS on average. Lastly, for the ultra performance testing, we will briefly cover 4K results, but we only tested a handful of cards here as it really is just too demanding for almost anything. In fact, not a single card on the market right now can hit 60 FPS, and even the RTX 3070 and RX 6800 are just scraping by with 30 FPS on average. 
As we can see for the RTX 3090, that is the top dog, hitting just over 50 FPS. Based on those performance numbers then, it's clear that those with even mid-range GPUs are just not going to be getting the performance they are used to when playing Total War Warhammer 3 at ultra settings. So to see how much performance you can win back, we're now going to take a look at preset scaling. And this was done at 1080p with an RTX 3050. The good news is, dropping from the ultra preset down to the high preset will net you a 31% performance boost, while the medium preset is actually over twice as fast as the ultra preset, which we will test in more detail very shortly. You can even get another 46% boost by dropping from the medium preset to the low preset, so clearly there is a very good degree of scalability here. That leads us on then to our testing with the medium preset, which honestly, I think is going to be a realistic scenario for a lot of gamers out there. Before we get into all the details, however, there is actually just one graphic setting that I would recommend tweaking if you do end up going with the medium preset, and that is with the anti-aliasing. So by default, the medium preset actually uses FXAA, but as you can see in this example here, it introduces a lot of shimmering and overall image instability, which is especially noticeable when the camera is moving. TAA, on the other hand, cleans up a lot of this. Not quite all, but it is noticeably better, so I definitely would recommend using TAA. It's not even that much more expensive either. You lose 12% performance with TAA high compared to FXAA, but in my view, this is 100% worth it. Getting into the actual medium preset testing then, the immediate good news is every GPU we tested ran much smoother at these settings. The Nvidia GPUs still showcase the frame time issue, however, which is clear here from both the GTX 1650 and GTX 1060, even at 1080p medium settings. The fact that the likes of the RX 5500 XT can now hit 60 FPS, however, is just much more like it. We can also see Vega 56 and the GTX 1660 Super pushing close to 100 FPS on average, which is frankly a far cry from the numbers we saw using the Ultra preset at 1080p. Things only get better from here too as we step up to the next half of our chart as every card here hit over 100 FPS on average. And while this doesn't excuse the performance we saw from these cards using ultra settings, it is at least possible to get the game running much, much faster. As for the 1440p medium preset testing then, in fairness this is still too much for the likes of the GTX 1650, but that was never a 1440p card to begin with and something like the GTX 1060 is actually still doing okay here, and the same goes for the RX 5500 XT. Vega 56 is also delivering almost 60 FPS on average, while the GTX 1660 Super is able to do just that, hitting 63 FPS. Any GPU from Vega 64 and up will also be able to give you a locked 60 FPS at 1440p medium settings, and even something like the RTX 2060 is closer to 80 FPS on average. Slightly higher up, we can also see the 2060 Super and the RTX 3060, which are both in the high 80s to the low 90s region. There we have it then, those are the benchmark numbers for Total War Warhammer 3. Now, I've actually been using Total War games as part of my GPU reviews for several years now, and those games have always been pretty demanding, but I do feel Warhammer 3 is very much taking that to the next level. Of course, there's definitely no denying that there is a lot going on during the in-game battles. We've got loads of units on screen, and they are actually quite detailed character models considering just how many there can be, and the fact that you are usually viewing the map from a fairly high position. 
The game's hero characters as well can produce a lot of particle and alpha effects which really do stress the GPU alongside the detailed map environments. Even so, with all of that said, there is just no escaping the fact that GPU requirements for this game are punishingly high. For 1080p Ultra settings, the RX 6700 XT was actually the first GPU we tested able to maintain a locked 60fps experience at all times, and stepping up to 1440p to achieve the same thing, we actually need an RX 6800 XT. NVIDIA GPUs also have a clear issue with frame pacing. Total War games do typically tend to favour NVIDIA hardware, and that is actually what we see here, but only when looking at the average frame rates, when I would say the frame times and the 1% lows are even more important. Right now, there is just too much inconsistency when it comes to the frame time delivery for NVIDIA GPUs, even at medium settings. That could well be why we have seen so many user reports of poor performance and it is absolutely something both NVIDIA and Creative Assembly need to look into. The good news is though, we found the game's medium preset does run significantly better, allowing every single GPU we tested to deliver a playable experience at 1080p, even for something like the GTX 1650. Granted, the game doesn't look as good when using the medium preset with sparser environments and fewer on-screen units, but it just makes performance so much better. I do just recommend sticking with TAA instead of FXAA as it will help cut out a lot of the shimmering and image instability for just a small performance penalty. Anyway guys, that is where I'm going to leave this video. As always, I do want to hear from you though, so if you've been playing Total War Warhammer 3, let me know how you found overall performance and also the gameplay down in the comments below. You can also hit like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'd love to hear you guys come chat with us over in our Discord server, which is linked in the description. While you're there, you can also check out our merch store, and even consider backing us on Patreon, where you can see some of our content early and get access to exclusive giveaways. That is it for this one though guys, I'm Dominic Forkit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.